Hi, this is Annie Grace. I'm here answering readers' questions. And today I have a question about the buzz. So this is a question and it says, hey Annie, my issue is the buzz that I get from drinking that first drink. I've always loved that. The ah moment and the gentle fuzziness and easing of tensions. I know that I continue to drink in my vain attempt to maintain that feeling, but never again achieve at that drink session again that feeling. And then I end up feeling rubbish, crappy due to all that I drink. How do I challenge the desired belief that I can live without the buzz? That just in that moment, how do I rationalize with myself that I can replace it? I'm scared that unless I can find a way to pull this belief out and change it, challenge it, I won't succeed, even though I consciously know I want this. Is there something you can advise that will help me challenge this? It feels like I might, this one belief might sabotage my chance of success, quite concerned. Okay, so this is such a good question. Um, First of all, <laughs> I want to explain what the buzz is, okay? So there's a few different aspects to the buzz, the buzz that happens when we drink. One of the aspects is the fact that alcohol actually slows down how quickly your brain processes thoughts. So it slows down your neural connection. So how one, you know, one signal or impulse will go to the next, it slows that process down. And so if in my thinking about this, if you are in a position where most of us are, where our thoughts from yesterday are the same as our thoughts from today, most of our thoughts have a somewhat negative bent to them. You know, they're quite intense in terms of, um, you know, negativity and we're, and we're sitting and we're like just thinking the same things and we're stewing and we're frantic and we're busy and all of a sudden you pour something in your body that like turns down that and like gives you space between your thoughts that feels very euphoric that feels like ah that's that ah feeling that moment that gentle fuzziness right so that's one aspect of it another aspect of it is alcohol artificially simulates the nucleus accumbens and other parts of the brain the pleasure center and this is for all addictive drugs alcohol is you know one of the, the most dangerous addictive drug on the planet but it it over stimulates these parts of the brain. So you might be thinking, well, Annie, this sounds great. Like you're just convincing me here. That sounds perfect. Here's the problem, okay? Number one is that initial slowing down of your thought synapses ends up really slowing them down to the point where like all sorts of things are completely destroyed. There's a quote by a doctor and he says, if most recreational drugs were tools, alcohol would be a sledgehammer. That's Dr. Aaron White. And basically the idea is that alcohol like so just obliterates like your motor function, your ability to remember things, your speech, your ability to taste things better, your senses, all of these things, right? And so that slowing down that feels good in the moment just has all these nasty repercussions. But you might say, well, Annie, I mean, come on, the, the pleasure, that's gotta be good, right? Something that I can just drink that artificially stimulates my pleasure center. Well, that's not good either. And here's why, is because when your brain receives artificially high stimulation of the pleasure center, the brain goes, Oh my gosh, this is too much. This is too intense. Your body is maintained to, like, is designed to maintain homeostasis, is designed to maintain balance, is designed to keep you healthy and happy at the optimum temperature, at the optimum emotional levels, balanced. And so when you overstimulate that, the body says, no, no, no. And it actually releases counter chemicals into the brain that bring down your level of pleasure, not only from that drink, but interestingly from all other aspects of your life. So that's not a good thing either. But then the real kicker about it is in my journey, I got really curious about this and I actually timed this buzz because I was like, is it really this that's gonna keep me stuck? I, I relate to this question a lot because I was like, okay, great, but a, a cup of chamomile tea is not gonna provide me that same like instantaneous, like, oh gosh, okay, life is okay again. But I noticed what what the reader has noticed is that it doesn't last. And so I actually took a stopwatch to it. And for me, it was 20 minutes. 20 minutes was how long I was actually feeling better. And then I started to feel bad. I didn't realize at the time that I actually felt worse than before the drink. And you just, of course, like, how would you know that? Because you're not feeling great, you have a drink or you're feeling fine, you have a drink, then the drink starts to wear off and you start to feel worse. You don't have this direct gauge or direct comparison. But I like to think of it as, you know, scratching doesn't feel very good if you don't have an itch. It actually, ow, it's kind of painful. Um, but if you have an itch, then scratching is like, oh, it's amazing, right? Um, the itch in this situation is the withdrawal from the previous drinks. As alcohol is leaving your system, it's creating withdrawal symptoms. It's creating this need for more alcohol. And so you have the drink and the, the drink is like a scratch. Now, when you haven't been drinking, 
I did this also. I went without drinking for a long period of time. And then I actually filmed myself getting drunk to, again, observe what exactly this was. That feeling, that buzz, it ironically wasn't that amazing. <laughs> I remember it was like, okay, the room is a little fuzzy. I feel a little off balance. And I can remember this from my first drinks ever of feeling like, huh, really? This is, this is what people do this for? I just feel kind of dizzy and a little bit weird and it wasn't great because so much of that really nice feeling is actually the fact that we're scratching an itch instead of just scratching and when you take that itch away it means you take the the drinking that you've done before that withdrawal symptom that kind of lower than before symptom so i like to say alcohol picks you up but never as far as it's kicked you down it's it's really this law of diminishing returns and one of the interesting, most scientific ways I can explain this is in terms of blood alcohol content. So when you have a drink, your blood alcohol content starts to rise. And in that rise of blood alcohol content, you feel those nice feelings. That's where you feel a little bit fuzzy. That's where you feel a little bit like the, the room's a little fuzzy. Things kind of get slower. Um, those feelings, right? That lasts for one drink. Now, this is not just me timing it. This is actually the science. It says that lasts for one drink. 20 to 30 minutes. And then what happens is your body says, whoa, 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 intruder, poison, bad, bad, bad. We need to get rid of this. And so it starts to purge from alcohol and your blood alcohol content start peaks and then it starts falling. Now, blood alcohol falling is a really nasty feeling for human beings. It is anxious, it's anxiety, it's feeling of unease, it's that feeling of not quite feeling comfortable in your own skin, it's feeling tired, it's feeling withdrawn, it's feeling depressed. All of those feelings come from your blood alcohol falling. All of those are what you wake up with in the middle of the night when you feel just like on fire and anxious and so upset, when you have the next morning, when you just wonder what's wrong in the world. All of those things have a lot to do with blood alcohol falling. Now, the problem is that when you have a drink, that 20 to 30 minutes is how long it is for the blood alcohol to rise. That's in exchange for one drink, your blood alcohol scientifically will fall for two to three hours. So you have this really unfair exchange. And I guess at the end of the day, here's the thing. It says, what can I replace it with? There's not something, unless you want to use another addictive drug, that's going to artificially stimulate your pleasure center in the, in the same way. It's just not, it doesn't exist, right? But you can replace it by building a life that you don't want to, like, need that instant escape from, right? And I think that's really important. But more important than that, I think we have to realize that life is a series of decisions. It is trade-offs. It's not about not having any problems. It's about saying which problem is better. Is it the problem of saying, huh, I don't, I'm not going to have that buzz initially. I'm going to try to find healthier ways. Like maybe I'm going to go for a run and get an endorphin buzz, or maybe I'm going to incorporate other things into my life that I really enjoy so that I just have low grade happiness all the time. Even if it isn't that 20 minute spike that I just get by the way, once a day, because as we know, once we start chasing it, it goes away. Um, that is, is that the problem? Or am I going to have the problem of, I do get that, but then I'm going to have all the repercussions, you know, but this is, this is true in all areas of life, right? This is true in so many places. Like if I wake up in the morning, am I going to have the problem of, I want to stay in bed. I'm warm. I'm cozy. I'm tired. I want to stay in bed. Am I going to have the problem of getting out of bed or am I going to have the problem of not getting my kids to school on time? And so it's just at some point we have to say, okay, Alcohol does give you a buzz. It does give you those 20 minutes. Alcohol also does numb you. You know, it doesn't fix your problems, but it will numb them. And those are things that in all my work, you know, I try to scientifically deconstruct the truth about does it really relax you? No, it doesn't. Does it really de-stress you? No, it doesn't. But there's two things that it does on a very superficial level, very short emotional level, and it will numb you and it will give you that buzz for, for a short period of time. And so those things, we have to look at them head on, straight on and say, huh, what am I willing to give up for that? Am I willing to let that take me down? And look at all the other areas of your life where you may not want to do the thing or you may, you know, not like, do I want to eat cookie dough? Yes, I do. I really want to eat a lot of cookie dough. Now, I have a problem with gluten where it will make my stomach hurt very, very badly. <laughs> So do I eat cookie dough? No, I don't. Now, is there anything quite the same? Have I tried gluten-free cookie dough? 
Certainly. Am I able to replace it? I'm not. There's something about the cookie dough with the little chips and the crunchy sugar that I just love, right? Sorry if I'm making you crave cookie dough, but I don't eat it. Why? Because I don't want the problem of a stomach ache. I'd rather have the problem of saying, okay, I'm going to put on my big boy pants and not eat the cookie dough. And at some point, we just have to get really real with ourselves and not, you know, don't let this thing, this 20 minutes be the sabotage. Because in so many other areas of your life, you've allowed to say, okay, yeah, maybe I want to stay in bed all day. Maybe I want to play video games all day. Maybe I want to just, you know, go to the movies instead of going to work. But I'm not going to because I'm going to have a longer view for my life, a longer view for my day. And I know in the long run, I'm going to thank myself later. So awesome. Thank you guys so much for your patience. <laughs> I really appreciate it with the sound issues and the internet issues and all the issues. So that is what I have to say about the buzz and I hope it, I hope it really helps. Have you tried the alcohol experiment? Okay, if not, drop everything and go to thisnakedmind.com forward slash experiment. This free 30-day challenge is designed to interrupt your patterns and put you back in touch with the best version of you. You remember it was that version of you that's living your most joyful life, the version that doesn't need alcohol to relax or to have a good time and is having more fun than ever. And again, this is a totally free challenge that will change everything for you. So learn more and join me 100% free at thisnakedmind.com forward slash experiment. And as always, rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast as it truly helps the message reach somebody who might need to hear it today.